In this tutorial, we are introducing the newly developed timecode feature in iClone. This feature forms the backbone of the industry standard motion capture pipeline, allowing seamless synchronization of multiple devices throughout production. With timecode enabled motion capture, you can output pre vis videos with synchronized footage, sound, and motion to significantly reduce production time. Now, let's hand it over to John Martin from Reillusion will give us a short intro for the motion capture shoot with Actor Capture. Hi, I'm John Martin with Reillusion, and I'm excited to share some new updates to iClone that is going to enable production use on a deep level. And that is the new timecode feature with Motion Live. Motion Live allows you inside iClone to aggregate lots of different data sources. And in this project with Actor Capture, we've highlighted the use of OptiTrack, as well as XSense, Rococo Smart Gloves, the Face Good Helmet, and then also Live Face using the iPhone. All of these data sources for face, body, and hands aggregated together in iClone can now be attached to timecode. And so you can capture that, edit that, and export that data with that valuable timecode source. Enables vendors to be able to reference data and get that from production use. And then also be able to just stitch all of your elements back together seamlessly utilizing the auto align feature in the new timecode plugin. So iClone is going to enable you to really take your stories deeper and deeper into the studio. And we're happy to work with Actor Capture to highlight these new capabilities and look forward to what you create. Thank you, John, for the quick introduction. In the next few minutes, Technical Director James Martin from Actor Capture will guide us through the entire motion capture process and demonstrate how he and his team successfully manage complex motion capture productions. But first, let's hear how James utilizes Reillusion products to streamline his workflow and enhance efficiency. Hello, I am James C. Martin, and I'm a technical director with Actor Capture. Actor Capture is a on-set service provider for virtual production and motion capture that has been happy to serve the Atlanta film industry and also other productions at large all around the world. We utilize the Reillusion ecosystem of tools to visualize our characters and character rigs, utilizing Character Creator, and then also iClone to utilize Motion Live to attach all of these different data streams for each and every performance capture tool we use. We sync all of that with timecode, utilizing Tentacle Sync, and we're happy to use the Reillusion pipeline for any and all production that needs visualization on the fly. That does sound exciting. Could you share more about the upcoming projects where you'll be using timecode for motion capture? How did you synchronize all the devices with timecode? Recently, we've had a couple of different performances on our stage that required a few different types of performance capture. Our first being a stunt performance where we had four performers, two male and two female performers, that were being tracked with OptiTrack and a 40 camera optical solution. This is all being captured inside of Motive and then streamed over utilizing Motion Live into iClone. It's extremely important that each one of our performers is tracked and then synced properly as we develop circle or select takes. We have the ability to quickly visualize and also in a real-time way see exactly how our character rigs are going to perform on our stage. We're all set and ready to roll. But before we begin the shoot, virtual production specialist Max Thompson will explain the importance of the quad view in the control room and how it plays a crucial role in the entire virtual production pipeline. Hi guys, welcome to the CMII. Today we're here to talk a little bit about our control room setup. So everything in our control room is driven by the quad and everything is synchronized with timecode. This allows us to ensure that our production stays on track and that everything is accessible for our post-production teams to analyze our footage and data after the shoot. So that means we have our two witness re reference cameras at the top that are red Komodos that are running at 24 FPS. At the bottom, we're running two visualization feeds. Our visualization feed on the right currently is Motive for OptiTrack, and we also have a visualization source of iClone on the left for our character visualization on our robots. And that's really what this is about, is being able to protect the process and ensure that the choreographed stunt performances come across in our CG characters as intended, as the filmmakers wanted their vision to come out in their film. Now, 
All the hardware devices in Motion Live are synced up. Let's go to the motion capture stage to watch the production in real time. What's up, everybody? I'm Professor of Practice James Martin, and we're coming to you from Studio 101. And today we're going to be capturing with our fight crew. We're going to be doing that with our 40 camera OptiTrack. We've already got our performers calibrated, marker sets ready to go. And we're also going to be streaming that live into iClone and other various tools. And we're going to be syncing all of that up with Tentacle Sync. So we cannot wait to bring some dynamic mocap to the stage today, and we'll be making sure that all of that data is qualified with Tentacle Sync. Can't wait for you to join us. With all motion and media recorded using Motion Live and iClone, we can quickly preview the results as pre-visualization. This workflow allows us to communicate the outcome both with the client and the post-production team. Now, let's focus on iClone and explore how to utilize the recorded motion with timecode to efficiently synchronize all data sources. First, we need to set up the environment in iClone to accommodate the timecode information for our previs setup. Go to Edit, Project Settings, and open the Time Unit tab. Set the project frame rate to 24 for this project. This frame rate should be identical across all devices and software platforms for the shoot. We can see the starting time code under this setting, but it's not shown on the timeline yet. Next, we need to change the time unit from time to time code. This can also be changed from the play bar toolbox. We can verify that the time unit has switched to time code mode by checking the digits on the timeline. Now, the project time unit has been successfully changed to time code. Now, let's apply motions to the characters in the scene. Right-click on the motion file and select Content Info to check if it contains time code metadata. Before applying the motions, ensure that the Align option at the top of the timeline is turned off, as we want to preserve the initial motion capture position of the character. To apply the motion, simply drag and drop the motion file onto the character in the scene. Alternatively, you can select the green character and drag the motion file directly onto the timeline. The exact placement of the motion clip on the timeline doesn't matter as the embedded time code will automatically position it correctly after alignment. We can also import FBX mocap data with the time code attached. To keep the scene organized, we'll hide the previous two characters. And before importing FBX motions, select the character and open the modify panel to ensure the transform values are zeroed out. The character should be positioned at the center of the 3D environment. Then, Double check that auto align is turned off. Next, go to File, Import, Import External Motion, and select the FBX file. In the Motion Profile section, you will see a list of supported motion profiles. Since our FBX motion comes from OptiTrack, select OptiTrack from the drop down menu. It's recommended to import the corresponding T-Pose file to allow iClone to make more precise predictions when applying the motion. If the first frame of the FBX file is already a standard T-Pose, you can select the same file instead. The same process applies when importing motions for the blue character. Unhide all characters, then select them and click the pin icon to lock them on the timeline. This ensures visibility for their motion tracks. To synchronize all motions, right-click on any motion clip and select Align Clip and First Frame to Embedded Timecode. This will automatically snap all motions with timecode to their correct positions on the timeline while adjusting the first frame to match the correct timecode value of the selected clip. Finally, play the motion to confirm that all animations are properly synchronized. With the motion synced, you can also import a reference video for motion editing or timing corrections. Simply drag a video file containing timecode data into iClone, and a prompt will appear asking if you want to import the timecode information. Click Yes to proceed. The imported clip will then appear in the 2D background video track on the timeline. To sync the video with the timeline, right-click on the clip and select Align, just as before. Now all motions are synchronized with the imported video. If further adjustments to the aspect ratio of the background video are needed, go to Render, Render Video, 
and set the frame size to match the imported video's resolution, which is 1920 by 1080. Press play to verify that the motion and video are correctly synchronized according to the timecode. This approach is especially beneficial for facial performance capture. By using a synchronized facial reference video, the time spent on lip sync adjustments is significantly reduced. We can refine mouth shapes and overall body motion more quickly in this efficient workflow. Once our motion and video are synchronized, we may want to add relevant information to the clip for review dailies or client viewings. This is where burn-in data becomes useful as it overlays essential shot details onto the video for easy reference. To enable burn-in data, go to Edit, Project Settings, and expand the burn-in data section at the bottom. Check Show Burn-in HUD, then select the specific information you want to display in the viewport. Burn-in data can include details such as date, frame, frame range, and time code, as well as custom notes like scene number, take, supervisor, or remarks. The burn-in information can be aligned to the left or spread across the viewport area, dynamically adjusting to fit the viewport size for greater flexibility. Additionally, the appearance settings allow customization of font size, text color, background color, and opacity, ensuring optimal readability under different viewing conditions. Burn-in data is not limited to the viewport. It can also be rendered as part of the entire scene in iClone. To include burn-ins in your final output, navigate to Render, Render Video. Under the Format section, select the option Include Burn-ins. Note that the burn-ins in the render are independent of those displayed in the viewport. However, you can still click the Burn-in Settings button to customize the information displayed in the render. To enhance image smoothness, Navigate to Render Quality and set Anti-Aliasing to Temporal AA. Once configured, click Export to start the render. Finally, we can see the progression from motion capture to pre and ultimately to the final rendered shot. Hopefully, the timecode functionality will help streamline your motion capture pipeline in the future. That's all for now. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.